All right, how's it going y'all? This is a continuation of my TrueNAS tutorials. And in this one, we're gonna be going over how to set up an open VPN server on TrueNAS. This is one of the great additions to TrueNAS 12 that we can finally set up an open VPN server natively through the GUI. And it's just really easy to use. There are still are some complications with it. And it actually took me a while to really figure out how to get it going. But overall, I found it to work actually pretty well. So I'm currently on TrueNAS 12 release candidate one core. And so in future releases, I hope this gets better. There still are a couple of bugs that probably need it worked out. And there are some things that just could be easier about it. But overall, it works quite well. And it finally allows you to just run it right off the machine without having to worry about running it within a jail, which I've really just found not to be that effective. All right, so first off, let's go over what OpenVPN is and what really a VPN server is. And so a VPN server is not the VPN you think about when you've got those paid VPNs that allow you to torrent things and get Netflix in your country. What a VPN server is, it is allows you to connect back to your home network with a secured connection. That means you can access local things such as files, web pages, anything you've created on your local network in an encrypted manner. And it also means you don't have to open up ports on these things. You can have incredibly unsecure things that are all firewalled off from the rest of the internet, but by tunneling into them, you can ensure that you still have access to them without having to worry about making sure that they're strong enough to be faced on the internet. And so a VPN server just allows you to connect back from anywhere in the world to your home network without having any issues whatsoever. You are gonna need two things first to set this up. One, you're definitely going to need the ability to port forward on your router. If you don't have this, you're just not gonna be able to set this up. And two, you're going to need to have either set up a DDNS server, and I went over that in the last TrueNAS video, or if you have a static IP address, which very few people do, you need an A record pointing to the IP address of that network. Or you could even do it just off the IP address, but I would not recommend that. All right, so I've spent the morning tinkering with this and I finally have it working. It's not perfect, but it's actually pretty good. And so the complicated thing about setting up an open VPN server on TrueNAS is actually all based off of the certificates. You've got to have both a root certificate authority and certificates for every single user. Then because the UI isn't great, you actually have to edit each of the config files individually to make sure they work. And so we're going to go through how to set that up across the board. So I'm really glad they chose OpenVPN, but in the future, I hope they both support WireGuard, which is incredibly fast and L2TP, which is just supported across everything. So I'd like to see that in future improvements, but OpenVPN is a great place to start because it really just works quite well and has clients for just about everything. It's been around long enough where it's been really tried and true, and so you can trust it. All right, so now let's go through and actually set this up. All you have to do is go ahead and log into TrueNAS, and as you can see, I'm running the release candidate one for TrueNAS 12 core. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to go into system and we're going to start setting up some certificate authorities. We're gonna see right here that I have a self-signed VPN already. That's because I was messing with this earlier to make sure I get it to work. And unfortunately, because it's actively part of OpenVPN, it won't let me delete it. But at the same time, I can't delete it from OpenVPN. It's just kind of annoying. It's not too big of a deal, but essentially I could not delete this without creating a new one first. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to click add because you likely do not have one already. And so from here, we're actually going to get to create our own certificate authority. This is not a authority that anyone else is going to trust other than you and any of your clients. However, the way the open VPN certificates work is every single one of them will trust this certificate authority. And so first off, we got to give it a name. We'll call it open VPN CA for certificate authority. Then we're going to go down and under profiles, they've actually set this up already. And you just say open VPN root certificate authority. And you click on it and it basically goes through and make sure all your settings are where they need to be. And that's really nice because I spent a while trying to figure that out. And then I realized they just had that button and I was like, oh, well, that was easy. And so now what you need to do is you actually need to fill in your business information. Technically, nobody else is going to be seeing this, but I'll go ahead and fill it out anyway. And now we just need to fill out the subject alternative name. So there are a few different options for what you can do here. But what we're going to do is we're going to do TrueNAS. Space Rex, which is the domain name that I set up with a, the DDNS server earlier. And so you need to do that for whatever DDNS server you're using. 
One thing to note, if you do choose a new DNS provider and you get a new host name, you're actually going to have to revoke all of those certificates. So make sure you've got this kind of locked down before setting up with a bunch of people. And now they've been nice enough to fill out every single one of these for us. And so we just have to click submit. All right, and so now just like that, we've got a certificate authority for OpenVPN. Now we need a certificate for the server and every client. So let's just go ahead and click certificates down here. And as you can see here, I was already doing some testing this morning, but hey, I can't delete them unfortunately. And so we're just gonna go ahead and click add. And so the first one we're going to do is the OpenVPN server certificate. And so under profile, you just click OpenVPN server certificate and it preloads just previously. And we're going to call this OpenVPN, the OpenVPN server. And under the signing authority, we're going to do that certificate we set up earlier, that certificate authority we set up earlier. Now we got to do the same certificate subject as we did earlier. And now we just click submit. Remember again to use the subject alternative name which is the same as you set up your DDNS address. So now we just click submit. Now, finally, we're going to set up one additional certificate and that is going to be for a user. There is one issue with this where I've not been able to change the user. So it just default uses nobody, unfortunately, but you can still set these up for every single person you like to connect. Then if it becomes compromised, you just remove the certificate from here and it will no longer be active. So we're just going to go ahead and click add and give it a name, we're gonna do, so OpenVPN, and this is for me, Will. And so once again, do the same OpenVPN certificate authority, but this time for profile, we're going to have a client certificate. Then once again, fill out the subject alternative name and all of the additional information, and go ahead and click commit, submit. All right, so now we've created three separate certificates. Well, two certificates and one certificate authority. The root certificate authority that we use to sign both the OpenVPN server and the OpenVPN client certificates. Then if you had multiple clients you would like to connect, simply create one of these for every single one of them. And that way they will all be able to connect. So now we finally got that set up. So the next step is going to be to go into services and we're going to set up open VPN server. So we're going to click actions. And unfortunately I was unable to reset this. So you see my previous configuration that I finally got to work. And so what we're going to do is we're going to select the server certificate. That's that open VPN server that we set up. And the root certificate authority is going to be that open VPN certificate authority that we set up for server. It's actually kind of a misnomer. It's actually the IP addresses that you would like to designate designate to this open VPN. So make sure it's not within your local subnet. And so I did 10.20.0.0 slash 24. So that means that we're going to have basically any IP address that's 10.20.0.anything will be given to this. Just make sure it's not on your local subnet. For port, 1194 is the default. And for authentication algorithm, SH1 is fine. That's what I would recommend doing. It's got a lot of compatibility. Theoretically, somebody could brute force it, but let's be honest here, your network's not that interesting. If you were running a huge business that was really critical, you might wanna go into a higher encryption rate. But let's be honest here, I really hope that you're not watching me set this up. You should probably know what you're doing already. Then for Cypher, AES 256 CBS is going to work as well. Once again, it's not ultra secure, but it's good enough for any home user. You can also set up compression. I've got it disabled and protocol is UDP. And then under device type, I've set up tunnel and under topology, I've set up subnet. All right. And so that's all we had to do. So now just go ahead and click save and it should be set up. So now we're going to enable it and have it start automatically. So now we need to go back in and do one additional thing. We need to go back into configure. This is data key FYI. And now we need to go in and download client configs. The, this is a really nice thing, but it's not perfect. You are going to have to edit them, unfortunately. So we're just going to click download client config and we select it. Remember I set up that open VPN will is the one I set up. 
you need to make sure it's signed in the same root certificate authority that was signed with the rest of the server. So I'm going to select that and it's just going to download it for us. And so we'll go into that and I'll drag it over here. It's going to download two different things. It's going to download the static key and the client config. And as you can see, I've got a dash two here because this is the second one I downloaded. So first off, this is what you use to set up OpenVPN. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up with it a text editor. And so that way we'll be able to see it. So first off, this is the issue you are going to have to fix right here. You are going to have to change the remote to the actual DDNS name. So for me, that is truenas.spacerex.co. And then under user and group, nobody is what's default. And I was unable to get these set up for anything else. You could probably go in and start actually editing the files on the TrueNAS build. But honestly, that's going to get really complicated and it's going to be out of the scope of this tutorial. And then other than that, it all works for me. So now I'm just going to go ahead and click save. And now what we need to do to use it, we need to get it on a remote device. So I've got my laptop here that I'm going to start up and we're going to get it on the remote device. So I'm just going to go ahead and airdrop it with my laptop and send it over. All right, so now I've got them on my laptop, but there's one additional thing we need to do before going remote. We need to open up this port 1194 on our router to the IP address of our TrueNAS build. And so because of this, you need to make sure that your TrueNAS also has a static IP address on the network. So we're going to just go in and we're going to go and log into our router. Every router is going to be different. So you're just going to have to Google the name of your router and say port forwarding. So under Unify, I go into settings, gateway, port forwarding, and just click create new port forwarding rule, enable it, port 1194 to the IP address of my TrueNAS build and forward to port 1194 and it's a UDP connection. All right, so now everything should be set up. I'm just gonna take my laptop off the network and put it on my phone's hotspot. This way we can test it as if I'm being remote. All right, and so now that we've got that set up, I've gone ahead and logged into my laptop and I've got myself off of my home's Wi-Fi, and instead I'm on the hotspot of my iPhone, meaning I'm remote to the network. And as you can see right here, this is the OpenVPN client, and so all we have to do is drag it and drop it into OpenVPN Connect. There's a bunch of different OpenVPN clients, but OpenVPN Connect works pretty well with Mac and I've not had any problems with it since they released a new beta and basically rewrote the whole thing. It's actually been working very stably for me. So as you can see here, access to the server hostname is locked. So you need to make sure that it's edited within the config file, otherwise you will not be able to edit it and just click connect after import. And just like that, we are connected. And honestly, it's just like that. We are now connected, and so I can access the, everything I need to locally on the network. It's really easy to go through and set up. All right, and so honestly, that's all you need to do. OpenVPN now works, and you're gonna be able to securely connect back to your home network with an encrypted fashion. All right, well, that's it for this tutorial. Go ahead and leave any other true NAS tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.